Hey everyone, welcome to another AI Conversation. I'm joined uh, in this episode by none other than Josh Valdeleon. You might encounter him as Josh Dev tama ba? on Facebook. Hi yeah. Josh, yeah. how are you? Hey Doc, doing good. Yeah. It's been just a really busy day in a month. Uh, but yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I can imagine. Eh? And um, I actually got really intrigued because we've been following each other forever. Uh, but uh, but I don't know about a couple, maybe a month ago or two months ago, you started giving these free workshops on many things. No, so can you can you start? Let's start with that. What what are you what are you up to? And uh, you know, what was the inspiration for doing all of these parang webinars? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was a, a funny story because I um I was just on uh, taking my lunch during um office, my my shift. Tapos um uh, parang isip ko lang bigla na parang magawa kayo ng page just to um you know parang deviate to whatever what what um I was doing before. Um so yeah, I created that page during that time. And uh, it was over a lunch break. Months. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> so yeah, after that, parang na create na siya during that time then um months after i've i've uh, uh that's when when i tried to parang introduce na the page to um the the community groups that i um uh, that i i'm i'm part of um but yeah it was just uh, parang um uh, an out of the box um thought thought na uh, ginawa ko na lang then, then months after um saka ko lang pa siya um in implement okay so i mean do you have like parang a mission here or I mean what what was the what's the current objective kasi nakailan ka na rin diba you, mm. I, I've seen you do a number yeah. of sessions so so what, what 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 do people what should people expect yeah well I'm actually a career shifter I don't have any um, background in IT so um, right now yung mga skills ko it's just really it just, they just came from self-study so um, during the pandemic it was parang um there was an influx of free online courses and during that time then kasi i w- i was uh, um trying to get into data science pa before or something about data um and yeah uh, parang there was a time that i had the not the parang wala kang work noon kasi you know parang people are just or companies are just adjusting to the pandemic and they don't know really what to do so like may mga na layoff and may mga tao na na, na, na na hold off muna and are not um coming to work. So yeah, I was one of those people na wala pang trabaho back then. Um so during my spare time I I'm trying to learn um everything about data that I can. So I've started out learning Excel, uh macros. Um although in my previous work, um pinaka first job ko ginagamit ko na talaga yung macros and Excel uh, for my data and reporting needs. Um I was a BPO trainer before I got into um into data. So um yeah it was really more of a self study than a siguro around uh, yeah it was around 2020 yeah June 2020 um when i got my first data job so i think the rest is history um uh, and right now that the objective of my objectives of my page it's, it's really more of helping people who would like to get into data so it doesn't have to be data engineering um could be also about data science and data analyst um so anything about data that that, that uh, or maybe they don't have to shift it right? because they can actually have um some applications of um the data skills that they have in their current work so probably they have some um things that they want to parang present um in a in a more friendly way and in an easy way so that's a concept about data storytelling so so yeah um i just really want to parang um help people to get into um or get basic skills up until they get into the advanced ones um through my um online lab sessions so okay, i've got a number of questions uh to ask now mm-hmm. it's nice you opened this up so first wow. is um and I can certainly relate with this. Ako naman din, I didn't come from an IT or uh, statistics or even a STEM background. Some people might get surprised by that. I, I came from a business background. I studied accounting in college, and although it, it, accounting is in a way major quantitative, naman, I also had economics subjects, but it certainly was not in my interest to get into deep uh, data and artificial intelligence. So it's kind of just happened. No? So in your case, you you call yourself a shifter. So exactly, if you don't mind me asking, 
how was that process no what 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 was the exact moment of the shift like before that you were doing something else and now you're doing data or is it part of an evolution during the job itself yeah somehow it was an evolution because there was this training um, back when i was with uh, my first company um we attended um a data storytelling class it was a training na parang inadapt ng company uh, from an external um class um i think it was uh, uh yeah as a um uh, training session na inadapt ng company then we took that class and i think that was the time na parang nag flicker sa akin that uh, i think i mentioned interested into data science na uh, kasi the, the way how they tried to analyze the data uh, from that heavy excel file na nalalako pa yung file na yon um ang dami niyang columns that was the first um ex- time na parang naka-encounter ng ganung kalaking data i think it, it was just around 45,000 records or so um pero the insights that we gathered from that uh, file was really tremendous, and we've actually got a lot of um, parang, um, takeaways from that data during that exercise that we had on that training. So that was the parang what motivated me to really pursue data. And during that time, din naman, I'm already trying to learn Excel um, and macros because uh, it's to work. Um, I'm not really kailangan, but uh, just to really improve the things that uh, um, I was doing before. Um, so yeah, that was parang the the the, the time na nag turn over sa akin into um, a different um, career or a different field. Yeah, sige. So this is good, no? Um, what was I gonna ask? So you're a shifter. You don't come from an IT mm-hmm. background. You learned it mostly on the yeah. job. Certainly, can relate to that. Have you ever encountered like gatekeeping? Because I'm a big passionate enemy of this. Eh? Like, oh, you can't be blah 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 if you didn't study blah blah blah. Mga ganyan, no? Was that ever uh, an issue for you, or didn't matter? Luckily, naman di pa naman. Um, so, siguro it's more of parang nahirapan lang mag-apply ng work na data uh, before. Um, pero in terms of gatekeeping, that uh, you you don't belong here. Wala namang kanong instance. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Because I find it, in a good way, ironic mm-hmm. that the person who didn't actually study it, like in university, is uh, such as yourself, is actually now teaching it, and that's also a third uh, <laughs> yeah. aspect that I can relate to. As you, as you probably know, I've been involved in a lot of education initiatives, Project Sparta, for example. Uh, I also teach in in school. For someone who who was never taught by school to do this, anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, back to you. Um. Okay. So, what? I mean, can you tell me about the experience of teaching people about this? Parang, what's the motivation? You want them to replicate what you did in your own career shift, or I mean, what's the thought process? Um. The teaching itself, parang di naman siya bago sa akin. Since before I was a trainer, I've been doing training naman, um, online sessions, online trainings, and in-person training. Um, but the the thing there was parang it was a bit different kapag na you're 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 um trying to teach something that you've just learned um a couple of years ago, um and somehow you don't have that much of an experience yet. Um that. Na compared to iba, right? That uh, people are have been doing these trainings uh, because they've had um, decades of experience. Uh, but for me, I think uh, mag two years palang ako sa pinaka technical role ko. Um, this coming, I, I mean, I just uh, went two years. I think last April. Last April. Oh, okay. um, not that long. Or sort yeah, of long. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, parang may ganong t- a feeling that uh, it's not hard, but uh, it's. This is some some a little bit of self doubt that um can I deliver this correctly? Uh, can I um make an impact to these people? Um, but for me, I I I'll just push through with these um uh, no matter what how I feel because it's actually nice because you're also pushing yourself to um elevate to to have some enhancements or parang get over these um, negative thoughts um and after that you're also able to parang, empower people right so parang there's a lot of people that um don't really know how to start um pero when they can come across your site or your your, your facebook page then uh, suddenly they just um somehow had um a path that they can just try to follow so yeah i think that's just uh, parang one parang highlight that uh, i want to um I, that that's one point that i want to highlight during the, in my experience of teaching these um things about data. 
yeah, I mean, again, I can certainly relate. I remember, because even in my own career, I started out in financial uh, financial services, no, financial markets, banking, then moved to IT. When I moved to, although I did it a little bit when I was in my banking era, but when I moved to IT, that's when I started doing all of these side gigs to teach. Right. So I signed up as a tutor. I signed up as an instructor. Uh, and honestly, di ba, merong tinatawag na parang the, what do you call it, the value. No, not value. Parang learning pyramid. Parang reading uh, and lectures are the worst way to learn something. The hmm. one of the better ways to learn it is by doing it, and I think doing, the best yeah. the best way to learn something is to teach it. Because you're forced right. to describe it and talk about it to your to your students. So nahahasa ka in in a way, you, know, you get better at it. Okay, sige. Um, can like can we deep dive a little bit on the subject matter? So you mentioned you were teaching ano ba, uh, basics, no? Uh, so I mean what. Mm-hmm. What drove you to? I mean, first, what is the curriculum, and then how is the method of uh, of instruction, and what are the goods and the bads that you've experienced so far, you know, in the in the act of you know giving the training? Yeah, well, actually, ang ang goal ko talaga was just to start out with uh, um, anything data engineering. So starting out a build, building ETL pipelines, um, and I I don't really want to teach the basics. Um, pero nakita ko during my discussions with uh, during my uh, my time talking about um SSIS um how to create ETL pipelines there are still a lot of people na parang um hindi pa rin wala silang ganung pang experience with the basics and the fundamentals of let's say SQL and and Python and that's why I had to um somehow create um a, a live session uh, for a crash course of Python and SQL, um, just to at least somehow address those gaps. Uh, the reason why I didn't, I didn't want to pursue the the basics, because there's a lot of references out there, um, na pwedeng makuha na or gamitin yeah. na mga uh, na mga learners, um, to study the basics, right? So, ang, ang goal ko lang talaga is really to do be more practical and uh, um, get away from parang you know. Parang, kasi pag nag-start ako ng ganong, ng, ganong, ng ganong basics, there are people who would take it kahit na nakapag-take na sila ng ganong course. And probably that's gonna be the time na parang somehow they'll be trapped into this uh, parang tutorial hell. Um, I was a, a parang a victim of that. So, um, yeah, um, I, I, that's why I want the 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 sessions that I'm uh, that I'm doing to be pra- project based, um yeah so that's mo- that's my first motivation um but I really had to to, to still talk about the basics, the good parts um somehow I I've been seeing comments naman that uh, people are learning a lot um na may mga natutunan sila from my from my sessions um although I didn't really see any sentiments or parang um parang posts from them that uh, um, hey I did this because of your of your of your um, course so wala pang namang ganun but uh, there are a couple of people na parang na kakausap ko and asking me help about on some things that I've thought um so yeah parang um they're they're actually looking back to the sessions that I've had before uh, which for me that's um, already a good um parang take away from or parang um experience that for me as a as someone who's uh, teaching these uh, things bad side i don't think i encountered anything yet um so far magaganda pa naman yung experience uh wala pa naman the d- 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 points sa mga sessions ko so far um but uh, that led me to something that i should have done some parang re- a survey response on every topic para just you know uh, for me to uh really quantify their experience um so yeah so sige, um i want to talk about kind of the specific uh subject matter and by the way it's good you mentioned the term tutorial hell no um it's really uh it's a phenomenon i think it's related to imposter syndrome you know where people can't seem to get started with doing things they just have to keep learning it and learning it and learning it i know someone who's spent the last 10 years of his life just taking tutorials wow. i mean i mean we should never stop learning as a principle yep. pero also you might want to start doing something after learning anyway sige balik tayo oh, sige go ahead you have any reaction to that 
I don't know. Um, uh, but yeah, I can agree that talagang ang hirap ng alisin sa sistema mo, uh, especially if you're trying to learn a new thing. Um, kasi na experience kyun before talaga parang tananawa na ako sa course. Ayon. So, uh, pero may 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 parang kontr- may parang nangyayari pa that you still keep on enrolling to those courses. Uh, na akala mo sa kailangan mo. Um, so matter of fact, you don't need those, but uh, you need a way for you to apply those learnings. Okay. Sige. Um. Let's talk about ETL. That's such a boring topic to many people. And by the way, sige, before we talk about ETL, I wa- I'm curious, did you ever... How do you say it? I'm sure you started with data science, right? Or analytics. And then you found data engineering after. Or is that the other way around? Because from my own experience, um, most people I know went that route. Eh. Started with analysis mm-hmm. first. And then later you found the the joy, <laughs> the joy of actually moving data around, uh, which I actually also did for for some time. No, uh, very therapeutic. And and then there are a few naman, fewer number who actually started as a developer, like back end developer, yeah. something like that. Mm. And they and they found the data ang ETL DBA route closer to what they're strong at, which is you know programming and you know, data right. structures uh, rather than the the data analytics and the data science, which is more like, you know, uh, either you're a business-oriented data analyst or you're more of a quantitative uh, uh, a scientist. Um, mm-hmm. So in your case, what was your direction? Because you know, since you you shifted into the career, right? Right. So yeah, that was the the first uh, parang um g- uh, path that I was taking. Um, I'm trying to learn data science, and uh, through um projects part that I've learned a lot of things. The mandon. Um, but one takeaway that I got from the the journey was um, uh, it's really hard to to for me. Parang nahirap na kung unawain yung mga models without understanding the um. Uh, the the concepts behind it yes i can definitely build models i can make predictions i can try to uh, make my own metrics to identify if these models are are good or or or, or bad um uh, pero this i just can't really find a way para to to make it uh, parang user friendly like uh, if i present this to the ceos i don't have uh parang i i can just explain that that uh, this is linear regression this is uh these are the 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 uh, coefficients that we've acquired based on these coefficients blah 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 it affects by this amount of um of of value to when we increase a, a value from that particular um um variable right so parang for me medyo nahirapan na akong gawan siya ng ganung ng ganung way and also yeah pasigo so i think that uh, that was a challenge learning data science and uh, in my experience when i got my first data job i also had some um gigs um which is more about programming and uh, my my main role um was to really parang um, automate several processes so for example if we have data sources from um, a separate file uh we can we consolidate that into a spreadsheet uh, usually yung before is macros lang talaga eh. um so for my parang quote unquote um, etl um in excel so um yeah so that's um siguro my experience then um somehow um helped me on um understanding or parang um unconsciously getting into data engineering and uh, this current job that I have now, um, I actually applied as a data scientist, but I didn't qualify for that. So I was reprofiled to a BI specialist. Um, the BI specialist there, it's uh, initially it was just really for um, dashboarding and creating reports. Uh, but now um, I think it was it was around twenty twenty two. Yeah, my, last last year lang yata siya, uh, when we were introduced to EPL na. Um, so yeah, I think that was at the time when I got really uh parang get deeper into data engineering. Um right now I'm one of the primary uh, developers for um ETL pipelines um and maintaining our um data warehouses and such. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, that was part of the trap. Mm-hmm. No, no, I was going to ask it's not a very common thing to talk ETL these days in the kind of traditional sense, no. Um kasi back in the day Siyempre, there are ETL tools. Uh, and then to a certain right. extent, they're still around. Mga Informatica, mga Pentaho, mga Talend. And then, uh, I think the more recent is you also have a lot of these open source 
uh, parang tools, no? Like, uh, Kafka, mm-hmm. uh, Nifi, Spark, Spark, and of course, the the, the usual RDBMS versus NoSQL versus Data Lake versus Data Warehouse, uh, parang philosophies, no? I mean, they're all good for certain use cases, pero... Anyway, sige. So, ikaw, what was your entry point into that world? No? Did you pick that up immediately? Did you study it? Or uh, was it part of your employment? Kaya ka na, ano, na, that, that's how you started? Uh, right now, um, we were introduced to in uh, ETL. Um, just, you know, para kasi we just had one ETL developer back then. Eh. At tapos, di pa kami makapag-hire. So, one way to get, uh, parang get through that is to um, expose us, BI specialists and analysts, uh, to ETL then. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, ano naman, I'm really, really open naman sa mga ganong um, upskilling since uh, I'm practically starting when I got um, into this job. Um, and na- nagustuhan ko din naman siya, to be fair. And uh, yeah, I think that was the time na, uh, na humaling din ako sa data engineering and uh, kind of veered away from data science, uh, which was the original path that I was taking. Um, so yeah, uh, we were using SSIS uh, in 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 our, in our cur- in my SQL current server. job. And uh, yeah, SQL Server. So, in my experience, parang and dami somehow um there's a lot of challenges talaga that uh, that uh, at least in our company uh, that we are trying to face um from data sources um having unstandard uh, uh, lack of standard in the sources tapos you'll have to standardize it so um it's which really a good experience um and of course my colleagues are really good um they've had uh, decades of experience um. Uh, and uh, they're really open to to telling the 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 strategies, the the skills, and the um uh, the best practices of this role. So um somehow it didn't really parang it was not that hard for me to learn um the concepts and the the, the tech part of uh, of being a data engineer. So can you maybe you know for those who are not familiar, because many of the people who listen to us are either starting out in their careers or they're not familiar mm-hmm. with the ter- territory. What does it take to build an ETL pipeline? Right. So if you're just parang creating an ETL pipeline, well, the goal here is to um the goal is to really get um data from uh from a um a single source to um a, a standard um repository or database so for example you have a csv file that you want to load um into a database and you need to do that because uh, you need to connect that um that data into a dashboard um tool um and your users would definitely won't have a way para to load you into the dashboard nila. and for their for them to automate the process of report reporting and uh, um, analysis and if they have if they need real time na data and and uh, statistics, then they'll definitely need to automate the process. So that's where ETL comes in. So for that, um, of course, you have to start with the goal. Uh, what is goal? Natin? So we'll start from um, making this data available in our data, data warehouse or database uh, for us to easily um, present that or connect that to a reporting tool or dashboard um, that users can easily access at any time that they need to. So to start off, of course, you'll need to start um, defining your data sources. So saan ba magagaling si data? Anong format ba siya? Is it a CSV file or a different database? Um, so it's it's really more of understanding the 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 sources that you have to that you need to have uh, that you need to load into your database um, prior to building it. Because in building part, it would be easy um, once you know the sources that you will be. Um, getting so yeah so you have to start from the sources you have to start from the goals and requirements na uh, ano ba yung mga kailangan gawin transformations um so once you have those list of um data sources um that's when you go into the parang required um calculations so let's in the context of sales um you have your parang your you have your um each you have your parent your receipt so you can try to um load that receipt into your um into your database so for example you have um a server or a database that that tracks all of the um historical sales or receipts that is an online online shop or or online on online um online portal 
then uh, from there you can just try to pull that into your data warehouse tapos you can calculate sales you can calculate uh, weekly aggregates uh, weekly sales uh, weekly profits um so yeah those are some of the transformations that you can also define um when you are trying to build an etl pipeline um yeah i, I think that's the that's the the main parts um extracting the, the sources you have um defining or 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 identifying what sources that you need <laughs> sorry um then extracting it using an extract program tapos transform it with the predefined um transformation um um uh, techniques that you need to do uh, prior to loading it into your um database so i i've always obviously i, I went through a similar path myself although i keep parang going back and forth no? um um so i have a comment do you agree that syempre it could be a loaded statement the complexity of a data engineering role is very different from a data science or a data analysis job and in what way is it very different so you know when your first question ko. complexity yes uh, they're really different um because the complexity of a data scientist um um is really more of um on the analysis part so so data scientists are are more of of creating uh, models um advanced uh, analysis um to understand or get insights from the data so the the complexity there would revolve around um how can we get insights or how can we answer the the problems that we have right now um so stressful din yung ganun work since um there's there's some um you will have you will have to work with data tapos you'll have to um explore on what um what variables could affect another variable or your your target variable um so yeah there's it's really going to be an, an an iterative process of identifying um which variables are affecting which or 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 your response um variable um so data engineering the complexity naman would be more of um aside from the technical part we know um data engineers are highly technical um in my experience Igor, it's more of um trying to address the weak data sources um i've seen a lot of um um data sources that talagang wala talaga standard yeah. so even if you impose a standard on that format it's still hard to to work on them since um some just uh, rely on their on excel as data source so understandably because they don't have the, the mean or a platform to encode their data um so they're just really resorting to that um their resources so um even if you really standardize um a certain process medyo mahirap pa rin may mga parts pa rin that uh, um that you can't really control um which adds complexity to the job um so yeah um in the sense they they have different um uh, complexities and uh, of course the way how we the, the way how we see the complexities be, between the two roles uh, is just really on, on the different uh, things that they're doing. So, yeah. So, yeah. I have a question. I'll follow up with that. Mm -hmm. What kind of mindset, and again, this could be a straw man question, what kind of mindset or personality gets attracted to a data engineering role? Or speaking from yourself, no, versus someone who gets attracted to the data science role. Because the vast majority of people I meet, they really want the data scientist job, or they thought they did. And then a smaller percentage, which apparently excludes, uh, includes you and me, kind of decide that data science isn't really that hot, or it's only good for certain things, not for you. And then you found a new passion in data engineering, no. Actually, I found more passions by even after that. Pero parang this realization that data science isn't everything. Uh, do, I mean, is that is that how you went about it? And any comment on how? What's kind of that mindset that made that makes people switch? Well, siguro data science. I think it's 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 logical that people would um get interested uh, with uh, in the data science first before data engineering um because data science are are more visual so if if for example if I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a newbie I am someone who would like in to get into a data role um 
you, you can easily introduce data science by just showing them the charts. So this is a line graph. Uh, this is um, there's some um, some um, confidence interval um, of a time series graph. So I can make predict predictions out of it. Whereas the so data engineers, it's it's hard to parang, um, it's hard to make them appreciate what we do because back end lang siya. So it's not really visible. So you can say na parang I can help you transport data from this source to another, but in what sense? I, I mean what's the what's what what can I get from there? Um so wala siyang talagang visual input. So that's why it's really easy for people to get into data science prior to um data engineering. Cause they'll appreciate the role um when they start encountering dirty data. So yeah. Okay, sige. Um, here's another, I mean, something that also occurred to me eventually. When do you think the data engineer is finally required? Because obviously, there are some companies or teams that really start out with one person. You're either the, you know, the data analyst, the data scientist, and then, or maybe you're, you're a DBA. When does the data engineer become a necessity for a company? Uh, and then on the uh, next parang seg, uh, section, separate question, when does the data engineer role start to become more of a software developer role? For example, creating apps. That's kind of like a hybrid. Nah, no? You're doing software development. Data engineering act, arguably is software development more than data scientists. Data science is you write a few hacky scripts <laughs> to run a model or transform the data. Data engineers literally build software, whether you're using an assisted tool like SSIS or building an app one from scratch. So don't sa kabilang side naman, when does it finally become software development? Or should it become software development? So, you know, any any thoughts on that? Yeah, you must source na rinika before. Um they've uh, they just have actually until now may mga ganun pa stories that uh, um their roles are software developers or software engineers but uh, they are they're also doing data engineering so they're doing pipelines and all that stuff uh siguro when do we need um uh, or when does a company need a data engineer um probably if they're already handling uh various or large amount of data and uh, um they just don't have you don't you don't want to mess around with these data, right? Um, so for example, um, you have a data from um from an application, um, an HR application, then you have a data for from uh, let's say, um, energy application, uh, energy software or or meter, um, um, application or software. Um, of course you can just combine them. Um, uh, but a, a software engineer can easily uh, pull those data and store it into a database. Um, pero in terms of the reporting part, um, of course, that's gonna be the weak side. Uh, parang, I, I would say the weaker side of uh, of a software engineer, and uh, they can just easily make um reports out of it. Um, so a data engineer would know definitely kung ano yung mga kailangan uh, configure and prepare at uh, yung especially the best practices of um uh, ensuring the that the data would be in a good shape uh, prior to report reporting and uh extracting it in, in, in a way that uh, the users can easily um, comprehend um, so yeah if there's really a lot of data that uh, requires um, especially um, real-time reporting and uh, um, output that uh, you can get from for example sales and other uh, metric then definitely you will need um, you, you already need um, a data engineer um, so when does a data engineer um, parang Nagpupunta sa software engineering. Um, well, siguro, medyo mahirap din sa gutin kasi right now I've I'm I actually built an API. Um, which arguably dapat di naman talaga natin ginagawa as data engineers. Um, so wait, wait, wait. can I stop you there? So hmm. the API, yeah, yeah. no, kasi ah, it's kind of this weird place where both the data ang and software ang seem to meet, no. Uh, mm -hmm. So what's your view? Napilitan ka lang, but you're really data ang, or data ang really needs to do that, and so for ang could do with that. It's a funny thing, no, to split hairs there, no. What do you think? Yeah, the first uh, it was a part of a project. Na ang project lang was to do a parang sanction screening. Um, so we do the sanction screening. Um, tapos there was this idea of um, can we try to parang um make this in a 
that that parang somehow of of a form or um a way that users can easily put names tapos they're just parang do the the wait ito parang gagawin na lang yung, yung screening um after passing that um that name um so for us data engine since kami yung may-ari ng process then we had to uh, explore ano ba yung alternative natin there and that's when um i got into developing the the api so right now um nagamit na siya for an actual website so in in the um the same company so um so yeah it medyo siguro like evolved na lang yung, yung project and your requirement from um a specific project and uh Yeah, I I think that was just the the time na na, na create ko na, na pa create ng API. So okay. there, yeah, I also realized that there's a really thin line between data engineers and and software engineers because somehow you're already doing the the software uh, development life cycle. Um, so you're you're practically these are not not just ETL pipelines. So you're also you're practically creating a software solution uh, that uh, you have to maintain, you have to monitor, and uh, you have to ensure that if there are any bugs or, or errors, you have to fix it. Because um, if you don't, of course, uh, my 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 impact shot to the business. So. Siguro when do we consider a data engineer a software engineer? Siguro if we we are not we are no longer doing the, the tasks of uh, of a data engineer. Siguro um if you are already building um something that's extremely way off of what you are or what you're supposed to do. Like um bakit kapag gumagawa ng front end? Uh, bakit kapag gumagawa ng um ng console application for this particular um automating um routine then probably it's no longer a, a job that's for data engineer um i would say since um mayroon tayong mga resources that uh, we don't just get um because of our role so um and if we're asked kapag self developer siya ginawa then it's it's easier um as uh, compared to if if we do it um, on our own okay sige um let's go back to uh training no so in your mm-hmm. view uh what are the essential skills for a data engineer or what makes a good data engineer in terms of capabilities and how are you going about training or instructing that that kind of competence or skills right um i would probably um start with the um with the of course the very basics um you should be savvy with sql um when i got into the, into this bi role i'm not that confident yet with sql although i know the syntax and the basics pero yung nakita kong sql there it's it's different than uh, what i was uh, what i knew uh, back then so definitely we um someone to be for someone to be a good data, data engineer they need to be really savvy with sql um You can also add a little bit of um uh, scripting there, like Python or um or, or other tools. Um, you know, it, it's I would say this is optional because I I actually see some parang trend na uh, there are different types of data engineers. First are the the traditional data engineers using um the SQL um databases and the uh, integration platforms that they have. Um, but there are also what we call uh, what I normally see as um uh, Python data engineers. So na Python na lang talaga yung ginagamit nila. Um, and uh, they're just coding it and just uh, try to integrate it with uh, with a big data um a framework like Spark. So yeah. Uh, but for me, I I would still go for the route na um uh, for starters, I would still go for the route na um uh, the having an ETL pipeline or integration a data integration tool um before getting into um into scripting because um it's 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 gonna teach you the the core concepts of um of data engineering so aside from the ETL part you would also know the data models um defining best relationships among your tables um hindi na siya basta parang um you'll just have to program it um in python um easily create your pipeline there um so yeah i would say that you um data um feature engineer, data engineers should know first the 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 traditional side first um bago sila mag start uh, mag explore on um the parang the bagong trend of um of python engineers um also um i would siguro try to um also add na they also need to better assess uh, more 
I think it's more of a a, a business analyst hat. Um, because I've learned this na parang you don't just say yes to all of these things. Um, if if you want to or if you want to build a pi- uh, um um a pipeline, then um uh, you have to assess first. Uh, you should know when to accept it and when not to accept it, and you should also know na um how complex this project can be. Because if you don't and you know parang nag mess up kasi timeline um mahirap ang kanyang mabalikan or ma- ma- ma-accomplish yung projects mo. Of course, that's gonna give uh, a bad impression for you. So, yeah, a little bit of uh, um, business analyst um, skills just to assess the project itself. Um, so, yeah, I, of course, from um, just to get that, you need a bit of an experience din naman. Um, so, yeah. And uh, that kind of leads me to the fact na parang data engineers are not really um, career shifters friendly kasi most of the data engineer roles require uh, experience, which understandably, kailangan naman talaga. So I have a question on that. Uh, kasi I mm-hmm. do happen across a lot of data engineer roles. And I think, like the ones that are posted. And the job descriptions, I think, follow a similar pattern as the data science or data analyst roles in where they require the candidate to pretty much know everything <laughs> in <laughs> in the in the realm of ano, data processing now which is hard to find i don't know how many people actually made it so any thoughts on this like what what are like some common tropes in data engineer hiring if they if they are being hired the same way because it's a for example as a data analyst there are a, like one shot data analyst jobs and you basically you're just given a specific set of topics to cover in terms of your analysis is there such a thing as a one-shot data engineer that knows enough or you feel that this is best learned but in like a team or something that so that they can expand your skill set mm, similar to other roles uh we just don't parang get someone that parang fully scaled with all of these tech stack um so i i would still try to parang if 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 my marketing requirements that uh, people had to know uh, these platforms, uh, they had to know um, SQL, SSIS, um, um, Talent, um, Tableau. So, na talaga sa role nila. I, I would, uh, I would still prefer someone na parang focus on a certain um tech stack. Um, and if kailangan niyaman ng ibang tech stack, then of course that person has to be flexible enough to to learn it. Um, of course, there could be some decisions in the company that uh, that requires them to move from this tech to another tech. Then uh, it's gonna be your job to um, to to learn that as well. Um, so I, I'm not also a fan of uh, learning or parang being a master of a lot of tech. Um, it's actually it's 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 not act it, it's hard it's hard right because um iba iba ng syntax at iba iba ng styles oh, so if you know that. Or if you're if you're saying that parang you know all of those tech stack, then uh, probably I would say na parang you just know the basics or the fundamentals and just uh, enough for you to get along, but not a master of those um tools. So it's for hiring managers, it's best for them to really define or try to team up or or um uh, align with the um with their data team um just to really identify the required skill sets for that particular role. Okay. Is there such a thing as a data engineer uh, leader? Parang ganon. Kasi obviously, the data scientists are starting to enter the C-levels na rin, no? your chief data scientist and all that. Uh, I don't know if they can become head of IT. It seems like a different job. Baka data engineers can become the head of IT at some point. Pero I feel that there's still this very distinct track that's just data engineering. So how do you uh, you know, based on what you know so far, now, how do you rate the career prospects for a data engineer? Is it something that's clear cut? Because it wasn't clear cut getting in there. No? But what about moving up the ladder? You know, in in terms of data engineering. Right now, Siguro, um, they can lead a data team. Um, because my right now my boss, um, it's not really about data engineering, but uh, it's more of a it's more of um the end to end part of um of a data uh of the, the data team of a company so um it can be also about um data management um it can be also about um of data analysis or reporting um and um data science so um it's not just purely na data data engineering that uh, 
you'll you'll be managing a team of um data engineers. Uh, that's I think that's gonna be more of a role of a um senior data engineer or or lead data engineer or something. Um, but for a more senior level or or see um manager your level uh, of a data engineer i think it's going to be more of a um of a head of a data a data team um handling not just data engineering part but also uh the other sex uh portions as well of the um uh, of the data life cycle so uh yeah okay okay um just on this since we're on the topic already we talked mostly about it um do you have examples of parang the high moments of a data engineer no matter how mundane it might look to someone else no why any particular successes you can talk about whether it was a one off thing or something i mean how do data engineers rate their excitement or rate their success no i don't know if that makes sense so personally um makapag-build lang ng pipeline parang saya ko <laughs> um kasi it's 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 good that uh, they're trying to develop something na um na gumagana so um yeah so yeah that's what i think one of my joys if i see my pipeline that uh, it's it's working and uh, it's doing um um what it's expected to do and then that's one and also if i'm exploring things like for example um i'm trying to implement some 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 fuzzy matching using um a, a, a different tool which is easy in a different tool but i want that to be implemented here because this is our parang main um um etl um platform so yeah so far it's it's working well and uh, i'm getting the results that i am um expecting so so those small things that uh, you're making you you can make your your um your tasks uh, you can make your tasks um and gumagana uh, sila then that's one of my um key takeaways and of course um being commended by people naman in our in our company um so na nagagawa natin siya and uh, na papadali natin yung mga um yung mga easy or difficult tasks sa kanila before so yeah that's also one of the things that uh, uh that <laughs> somehow it makes my heart um big and then <laughs> okay so on the flip side what are some uh downsides to the job i mean is it all you know is it all fun i say it sometimes when you hear people talk about their dream job parang you can't do anything wrong so yeah <laughs> i mean in reality there's certainly many things we can do wrong so in a data engineering job what would be the equivalent of my downer na yan? what's a what's a disaster waiting to happen in that role. Right. So if you are already handling um parang pipelines or data na walang documentation, I think that's um uh, um uh, right now one of my challenges kasi um uh, we had to look at some of the pipelines and um data sources that haven't been documented but per na create sila many many years ago. So mga legacy um uh, um pipelines sila and uh, end tables. So it's hard because you wouldn't know how to start because <laughs> um, you already have the data you know it's working um uh, but sometimes you need to to change it and sometimes you sometimes magkakaroon siyang error and you have to investigate further what happened and what went wrong so with that parang kailangan kailangan mo siyang uh, malaman i mean kailangan mo siyang aralin uh, in a quick um in a quick manner para um you can deliver timely um res- solution so yeah, that's I think one of the um challenging parts of being a data engineer. Um, which is kind of similar with other roles. Now, if if they're the ones that they're working with ha- does not have any documentation or any um, you know, ref- references or resources for you to know what's happening or what's going on behind those um projects. So documentation in terms of uh, so documentation des- describing the problem is that what it is. Uh, documentation about the project itself. So, for example, okay. um, where do we get these data? And yeah. Okay. So, okay, um, I just realized we're nearly at the hour. Um, so, it yeah. just goes by very quickly. Uh, maybe the best way to cap this off is what do you have like some sort of a checklist apart from watching your videos, obviously, or joining you in a webinar? What are the top five things that aspiring data engineers, if there's five, obviously there's more than five, but if you're going to choose five, what's the starter pack for a data engineer? 
and how do you know then and then how do you recommend they move up in their career yeah so you got to start from understanding how to work with data first um i've been think, thinking about um uh, people uh, telling people to te to to learn sql python and, and all those tech stuff um but it's to me it's hard um to understand what's going on if you don't know how to work with data so as long as you know how to work with data um for example if you, if you are working with data in excel um try to know what's going on what are the usual problems na na encounter mo and uh, um what are the usual um uh, things that you are wishing for for this uh, for the, for excel to to do uh na makakapagpadali ng data preprocessing or data cleansing tasks mo then uh definitely that that's uh that's going to help you out in um having a bit of an exposure or a bit of an um of, of, of a glimpse of what data engineers are doing so yeah understand understand first or learn first how to work with data number one. um because it's yeah it's it's really essential number two is that's when you get into the tech part um learn sql um learn uh, python if if you are trying to go to the route of um a python data engineer um or try to learn um of course try learning other um data integration tools like sis um uh, you can also look, um, opt for talent or other tools so yeah because it's it's not just purely SQL. It's not just purely uh, Python. You will be working with platforms or or tools that uh, help you in making this task easy. And so the the third one would be, of course, to build your project. Um, uh, similar to with data science that uh, um no, somehow my about data science portfolio pa yan. Um, for us data engineers, it's hard to to make that portfolio because um it's 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 not easy to present them eh? um but for now i i figure it's best for for people to um build build things uh, as they would build it um and just try to paste it somewhere or put it somewhere na pwede ma access ng mga potential um, prospects sa, sa kanila since um of course if people if those people or if the hiring managers would know or know what they're looking for then um, makita na yung profile and then it's gonna be an advantage advantage for them to um to you know to be more qualified for the role. So yeah, I think that that's uh, I think what what I would advise uh um newbies to to start with. Do you are you familiar with some of the more parang current like open source EPL frameworks like uh I don't know NiFi uh because I'm looking at uh, the best free open source ETL tools in 2023. Um, let me know if you've heard of some of them. So there's Hevo. You heard of Hevo? Uh, Apache Camel, Airbyte, Apache Kafka. Yung Kafka, I've heard of that. Uh, Logstash, uh, Pentaho, Kettle. I, I, I've used that before. Talent, you mentioned Talent. What about Singer? Have you ever heard of Singer? Uh, Apache NiFi and Clover. So what are what are some of these? No, I have to admit I'm also not updated with some of these stuff. And of course, you mentioned the classics like SSIS, Informatica. So have you ever encountered any of these? Um, your Camel, <laughs> uh, Camel and Singer. Uh, but the the rest of them are quite familiar, naman. Right. Um, so yeah. So very, you know, I think. It, these are just really new. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, just like in the data science world, everyone's all right. going bananas <laughs> over. Ah, yeah. We, should, we still have maybe a squeeze a few more minutes, no? Mm -hmm, sure. What about, what about AI and data engineering? Do you see anything there? I mean, it doesn't have to be, it could be generative AI. It could be traditional discriminative AI, machine learning. What's the... What's the intersection uh, as far as a data engineer is concerned when it comes to AI? Uh, yeah, of course, um, we still code. Um, so that's parang pinaka top of the list na ginagamit natin uh, for the reason why we are using AI. Um, so generating code, uh, debugging, and all that stuff. Um, second is, I've also used this to kind of help me brainstorm um, about the, the best possible route to build a specific project. So for example, I'm torn about I'm torn between um two approaches, then I, I'm 
using AI to just list down the pros and cons of these uh, approaches. And from there, siguro mamimili na ako and maybe ask more questions um, um, to further narrow down uh, the um, the best um, approach to build the project. Um, I think there's also an AI solution now um, with Microsoft. It, I think it's Fabric. Um, although I haven't tried that yet, but um, it's actually interesting to to know um, its capabilities in terms of data engineering. Because um, since it's just purely um, natural language, can we kaya kaya niya magcreate ng um, um, from simple um, natural language query? Can you kaya kaya magcreate ng pipeline? So that's something that's uh, that interests me. Though I haven't tried that. Pa. Um, so something that uh, I can look forward to. Okay. Um. Any. Any uh, shout out to people who would want to catch your next session or I don't know, do, do you have a link or a website that you'd like to refer them to? Obviously, uh, one way we can support it is to just talk about it. No? So so are you doing any courses mm -hmm. up and coming up and where, where, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, you, they can just uh, follow my page on Josh Dev. Um, so far, we have upcoming events, but uh, by November, I'll be doing um, a session about, uh, not a session, but I think I'm gonna be making a um a list of sessions or a series of sessions about creating a, a data engineering um, pipeline or a, a, an ETL pipeline. So it's gonna be an end to end um uh, process um that would help them um out in building their port portfolio of Naren. So I'm still trying to cook it. Um, but uh, definitely by November I'll be starting it out. Okay, so we'll be watching with keen interest on yeah, yung mga series mo no? and. Uh, let me know if you want to do like a like a live stream or uh, meron din ano eh, live coding if you ever have you ever done that yeah <laughs> uh, si George Hotz made that popular and means one two three hour live coding session and you don't even have to be talking the whole time pwedeng time ka lang so, right and then yung mga uh, what people watching your stream get to comment I actually might do something like that especially I, I, I kind of agree with you on your earliest point about the basics is already well covered I mean right. every, every there's a lot of YouTubers talking about an, uh, data analysis you know data science so but I think there are some topics that have never been actually covered like some of them are like practical stuff like I'd love to talk about building an actual recommendation system you know on, from scratch or uh understanding Shepre, since I'm into AI is understanding how these GANs these uh diffusion models mm -hmm. these transformer models actually work but from a practical standpoint actually now that I've heard from you parang I'm starting to get inspired I, I put that on the shelf for a while and maybe it's yeah time, time to open it I don't know what I'll call it though if I'll use my current headings or I'll have some sort of a special program for it we'll, we'll see Because early days interesting though eh. oh. do you have a YouTube channel? may Josh Dev YouTube ba? wala pa I do pero di pa siya ka active so that's something that I'm still working on okay. pero that's where I post my recordings naman so yeah yeah, that's something to watch out for. No? Is it also Josh Dev? Uh, uh, at, at Josh Dev sa YouTube or Diba? I'm not yet, not yet. Yeah, it's get... still on my personal page, but yeah, I'll be making one. Yeah, you should get that handle na kasi yun yung branding mo. Eh. You have to get that ano, over the hump. Right. <laughs> yeah. There aren't that many, I think, a data engineer content creators. So, you never know. No? Maka yun talaga yung pathway. No? Right. Okay. Sige, um... I'd like to thank uh, Josh Valdeleon, uh, data engineer, data engineer instructor, career shifter, basically uh, bagong bayani I would call you <laughs> because you're you're charging a path, and 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 I'm happy that there are people like you who would like to impart their skills. Now. So I think you're one of a few. Uh, it's a very very rare breed. So please continue doing what you're doing, and yeah, I hope to catch you again in another episode of AI Conversations. All right. Thanks, Doc. I had fun this session. <laughs>